give everybody a chance to jump on. Maybe I can watch from my tablet. What am I doing? Okay, that's weird. Sorry, you guys kind of get a little replay of what's happening there. But, oh, no, nope, because I can't see the comments now. Okay, hopefully if I can, if people join, I can see comments. So I'm just going to get going on this part because first I need to do the embroidery part of it. So I will turn the video around because my machine's right behind the camera. It's going to first do the placement stitch for my jelly. I'm trying out the jelly vinyl. I picked this up when I was at So Magical Expo in Texas. This is from Glitterbug Fairy. This, so I've never used their jelly vinyl. Let's double check actually. Okay, yeah, we're gonna. So yeah, I already have my my wire picked out. I'm using a yellow. I thought it was orange. Apologies to anybody that was in my class. But here is the. Hi, Carol. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't see it on my camera, but it's got my tablet going. Hi. So yeah, so this is from Glitterbug Fairies. My first time using their jelly vinyl. So my placement first for doing the embroidery because I'm doing it on a. This is a canvas. I honestly can't remember where I got this from. So it is just like a really cool. The original kind of reminds me of the original series and because I'm going to a comic-con and William Shatner is gonna be there the original Captain Kirk I wanted to make a light-up bag for him to sign to add it to my collection. So That's why I'm doing it on this specific fabric and Because it's doing I'm doing it on a canvas I'm adding like a, a vinyl which I think I got this from my punk embroidery one of those like little sh sample sheets or something um, I've had it for a while. I don't I can't remember exactly where I got it, but um, so when I cut this out, because the vinyl will be over there, I can do the lights on the jelly this way. If you didn't have that over overlay over the vinyl over the top of the canvas, then you would have a fraying edge, so then it wouldn't really work. If this was a vinyl, no problem. But since it's not, got to do a little bit more, an extra step in there, which is okay. It still turns out it'll be it'll kind of I'm doing it like I did my the heart hands one where it will be inside the the delta and then it's going to go around the outside of the delta as well to kind of give it an outside glow as well. So I'm going to go over to my machine. Let me turn the camera. Yeah, I'm super excited to to get that signature. So trying to gently rotate so you can see the machine. Okay, cool. Okay, sure, you yelled at me. So I already got it programmed up with the colors. I'm just using like a golden yellow, and then I got it programmed with the stops. So this is only like a five minute stitch out, so it won't take very long. And I'm doing this as a, this is a six by 10 design, but it's, I'm using my eight by 12 hoop. Of course. Really? You wanna give me problems when I'm doing a live? You were so good yesterday.
And then since this is just a placement stitch, even though it's gonna miss this section, it's just a placement stitch, I, I'm really not worried about it. And just make sure I have enough, my bobbins good. pull this out I'm just gonna put my this one has a detachable tray that way I don't have to keep moving the camera to go back to my table I have a table right here super convenient so if you guys have make a comment I will get to it in a moment back to the main table I can't see anything at the moment so because I'm doing a vinyl over the top of this, because I'm doing it on a canvas, I am using cutaway. Otherwise, if I were to be doing going directly onto vinyl, a I like tearaway better. But since I can cut away this, and then it's, you're not going to see it, so it's all good. And I want this to overlap. So you can see my placement stitching right here. I don't know if you guys can or not. Let me. Can you guys see that? I don't know if you guys can or not. Kind of hard. But so here's the edge of my stitching, and I want to make sure that my jelly goes past it. I like because normal applique you go really close to the edge, so that way you save your material. You actually because you're not going to cut this you want to leave it larger than your design itself. So I'm just going to center this and kind of give a general so Let me grab my masking tape. So I'm just going to secure this down. So my design, the placement stitch ends here, but my jelly goes up here, edge here, here, edge here, here, bottom of the design, bottom of that. So because you want it to be larger because that's what you're going to attach your clear vinyl to, which is what your lights are attached to. If you had this trimmed really close, then you have nothing for your lights to actually attach to. So this being large is your attachment point for the clear vinyl for your lights. And then when I add the fabric over the top of this and also the regular vinyl, then yeah. Then, we have to, then we'll do some cutting of the fabric Oh wait, oh good, I caught myself because <laughs> I don't have a second tack down. So if you're doing an embroidery design, one of my embroidery designs, when you do your, to, you want to tack this down, but you want to throw your fabric over the top of it because then you tack your fabric down and your jelly at the same time. And then that way it gives you a cut line for your fabric. So I just notched, I found the center of my fabric and just put a little notch at the bottom and I did the same thing at the top, put the edges together. And so this is, a, I'm doing the Zaneda backpack for this one, which is by Aura Rosa. And so then I just put a little snip there at the top and then there are little marks at the top and the sides of my hoop. So I can kind of line it up with the notches in the hoop. I can kind of 
So it fits inside the opening. I just want to double check. Okay, so the top of that is there. Where's the bottoms? Okay, so, okay, cool. I just want to make sure that they're not going to be so close to the edge where it's going to interfere with potentially because this is a binding back. I don't want it to interfere with adding in the binding. So that looks good. I'm gonna add some more tape to secure the fabric. Okay, so now when I put it back into the machine, it's going to do the, the same area that it did the placement. It's going to do a tack down. So it's going to tack down the canvas fabric and the jelly to each other. And then I'm gonna cut out the middle of the canvas fabric. Design isn't very intensive because that'd be a long time to wait on a live to do for this stuff to stitch out. That's where the magic of fast forward on pre-recorded videos works. So if you forget to put your fabric down and you tack your jelly down to your stabilizer, no big deal. You just go back a step and then add your fabric and then add the tack down into it. I just try to avoid doing multiple on the exact same spot because then it kind of creates bulk. So I'm using my applique scissors from Chic Geek. I absolutely love these things. So I want to try to, I can save this inner Delta fabric with all the Deltas on it, which I learned at So Magical Expo. It's like for being a Trekkie, I didn't, I don't know a lot, but these little logos are called Deltas. I learned that from Nicole from New Moxie. <laughs> I want to try to save this fabric and then I can like applique it on something else or whatever. So I just kind of gave it a little pinch on the side because you don't want to accidentally cut your threads. If you do accidentally cut your threads for embroidery, one, this is going to get covered up again anyway, so it's not the end of the world. But if you happen to cut more of a in important stitching, just throw it back in and run your stitch again. No big deal. So you want to be careful how deep you cut because you don't want to cut into your jelly. So I just made a small one and I'm going to go around and I'm cutting right up against it but not trying to make sure I'm not going to accidentally cut my threads. Ha! Because I put SF101 on the back to help. I didn't quite get to that layer. <laughs> Okay, now I got both of them. And the nice thing about applique scissors, because they have such a small point, they can really get down into the pointed areas of your applique design or just your designs in general. And you can really get into it, make a nice crisp point. Ooh, 
And then again, you want to get close, but you don't have to get like super crazy close because there is going to be something. And then when you get into the more curvy areas, that's when you start working and cutting towards the front of your scissors. Now I have this nice pretty delta. I can put some like edge fray or edge check or fray check on the edges of this and I can applicate this onto, ooh, I can put this on a jacket. Sorry for my dogs there. I have my door shut so they can't be in here with me and so my dogs there. I have my door shut so they can't be in here with me and so they're getting mad. So they're getting mad. They're all mama babies. But yeah, they're all mama babies. But yeah, I could totally use that on something else. Okay, so now, before I throw this back into the machine, I want to grab my vinyl. So you want to make sure because you are, it's going to do a inner tack down and an outer tack down on either side. So you want to make sure that you completely cover your entire design. And you don't want to cover this whole section and this whole section I can use that. But for smaller appliques. Like my kids have an hour before dinner time. <laughs> they usually get really more riled up when it's closer to dinner time. Okay, so that's tacked down. I'm going to throw this back in and it's going to do those two lines. So it'll go from the in, oh, I'm not sure if it goes inside to outside or outside to inside. Either way, it's going to do both of those and then we'll go over to the table. You guys can hear the ooh. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> My other machine is a year and a half 
older than this one. And when it finishes, it just keeps going and gosh, it gets so annoying. I love that this one only does it once and then it just, and then the light flashes too. I can't hear it. All right, heads up. I'm going to rotate you guys. Yeah, so this, that's my, this is my six needle machine. My first multi-needle. Okie dokie. Our tape anymore. And technically, I can pull this out of the hoop now. So now we're getting closer to the point of embroidery parts done. If you were to do this same design not in an embroidery machine, you can do this by using your. Cricut and you can pre-cut the Delta out on your canvas fabric if you wanted to and then same thing like this if you or if you have it so if this was like a non fraying material you could you, cut the Delta out and then just applique and just stitch it down your jelly and again you'd still want your jelly to be larger than your opening if you're doing it via a sewing machine and then yeah, you just have one little stitch line to tack that down. And so on this one, I can cut the outside and I'm gonna cut the inside. So just like we did before, because it's close enough to the edge, I'm just gonna jump in from the end. And when you get into these like smaller areas, I kind of stick my finger underneath to create a gap. Can you guys hear me okay? I just wanna make sure you guys can hear me. If I'm talking loud enough, my camera's kind of behind me. But I just put my finger in there to create a space. So that way I don't accidentally get too close to my fabric and create and like cut it or make a nick in it. So and again, once you get to the nice long straightaways. You just use the back part of your scissors and you can get nice long cuts. And then I'm using my off hand, if you're, it doesn't matter if you're left or right handed, I'm using my off hand to kind of hold this up. So, and then plus it just kind of gets it out of my way. Nice and pretty. And All right, so I have a decent amount left for, for scraps. I can use that later. And just like I did with the fabric, I'm going to make a little cut really close to the edge. So that way I can try to save this final because then I can applique this delta onto something else because it's completely usable. If you don't want to do that, you could totally just cut this in the middle and then just cut it out and throw it away, no big deal. Or, because it's, it's a good enough piece, or big enough piece, I can always use it for other applique or scraps. And then like I did with the fabric, just a small little nick. You don't want to cut down too deep. You might have to do a couple little snips to actually get through the material all the way, especially depending on how thick of vinyl you're using for this. And then one thing, if you are going to create your own designs and you're going to use your Cricut and you're going to applique it using your sewing machine, something I've learned along the way, you want to keep your designs on the smaller side. Like this one is bordering on, it's this gap between the lights might be a little too much of a gap because then you can get dark spots. You wanna keep your design, the gap in between where your lights are, like maybe no more than three and a half, four inches. I think even think four inches is too big because I'm specifically thinking of my Pikachu bag that I did. 
I haven't used my marker in years. I'll need to bring it out again. Yes, Cheryl, you definitely want to bring that out because doing doing light up bags via embroidery designs so much easier, so much easier, and then you always know your sti the stitching looks really nice. Being on a sewing machine, so my stitches don't look the greatest. So having it, there's my tail pillow. Looks cute. I can either use it for other applique or I can applique this. Ooh, I can always applique this on the back of the bag. That'd be kind of cool. Ooh, that needs to my stitching. <laughs> but, okay, so that's that one. But yeah, so on my Pokemon bag that I did, the gaps between the edges and the sides where the lights were was like three, three inches. And the middle part got, you had like a dark spot. And then I even had it on my, the bat, the, the mouse head with the bats. I kind of had some dark spots in that too, but it was kind of an odd shape. <laughs> if you heard the, ooh, that was Maple. She does that all the time. I love it. But yeah, so you want to kind of keep your, the gaps oops, on the small side. So now we're going to flip it over and we're going to cut away our stabilizer. Technically, I'm like, why isn't this working? Oh yeah, tape. Removing tape would be helpful. You're being fussed. Oh yeah, I'm being fussed at, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're mad they don't get to be in here. They're always in here with me, normally. But with the door shut, <laughs> and plus, well, there I'm still in that one. But, yeah. Yeah. But, so no big deal on that one. And then, same with over here, you want to... hear them running up and down because I pull away right on this side of the wall and I can hear them running up and down the hallway so I don't know if you guys can do or not. My kids are first. So if you didn't know I have seven corgis. Yep, you heard me right, seven. I did have eight lost because we had our original little boy that's Gus Spud she had a litter of four but one of the one of the puppies didn't make it that was tough but I learned better for when River had hers and River being the bigger sister she had six she freaking went she went all the way for being a small dog, I can't believe she was so big. Her belly was ginormous. Oh, you don't, oh, you, know, you don't have the earphones in. But yeah, she she looked like a turkey dinner when she was that at the end. She was so big, it was cute. So we ended up keeping two from Soraya's litter. My mom took took the other girl and then from river's litter we didn't quite want to get along and it was causing issues so we wanted to be safe um and then rudy her oldest he got cancer in december and we lost him in january so like six maybe seven weeks from the time we found out to when he passed yeah so it went quick but anyway so we have we have seven adorable fluff butt corgis so here is the design and the jelly you can see my hands behind it and for the moment oh wait I was like no we can't set it aside but we kind of need it still and sorry if I bumped the camera we are going to grab our clear vinyl and I want to make sure that my clear vinyl is larger than my design from Marine Vinyl. The 
16 gauge. It's just got an, it's got a nice thickness to it. So when I like, when I'm sewing on it, I'm adding the lights and it just, I, don't know, I, I like it. So that's personal preference. Okay. And now we're going to put the clear vinyl. How did you come up with their names? So I'll start at the top. So Gus is the oldest Corgi. He, he came with that name from the breeder and we liked it. So we kept it. And plus it's a, like we're, my husband and I are both big Disney fans. And so I'll come, I'll, let me come back to that while I do this. So I'm grabbing a Sharpie. You can use a thinner point. Do I have a thin point? Oh, I have a brown one. If you can't see the thin, the fine point Sharpie, the other one is fine. But you want to take your clear vinyl and put it on the back of your design. You can do the front or the back. It doesn't matter. And I'm, so I'm, nice part about embroidery, I'm following the inside stitch line clear to your jelly. So you're going to take your Sharpie and you're going to trace the outer of your design. If, because I'm, because of the embroidery, it gives me a nice line. If you're doing this via applique with the sewing machine, you want to, oh, how thick is the clear vinyl? It is a 16 gauge and I get it from Marine Vinyl, so marinevinyl.com, and yeah, it's, there's, it's a 16 gauge. So you want to trace this around, and if you're doing the applique, this is your guideline to where you're going to add your lights. If you want more of your lights visible, you come a little bit to the inside. If you want to be it. So, so then you trace out your full design. And so getting back to Gus. So yeah, Gus came with that name. And so then his middle name is Diego. So kind of a, it's a Disney character name. It's like from Go Diego Go or whatever. Some, I don't know. It just, it worked. I was looking up just like Disney boy names or whatever. And Diego was one of them. And it's like, oh, that sounds good. Let's try Let's go with that one. And plus at the time we were living in San Diego, even though he was born in here in New Mexico. So. So Gus is Gus Diego. River's name comes from the show Firefly, from the character River. And her middle name is Daisy, for Daisy Duck. Then her sister is Soraya, and I was... At the time I was at a, working at a... I don't remember where. But I was working somewhere, and um, it was a father and a daughter came in. And he said her name, and her name was Soraya. And I'm like, oh, that's really pretty. So I, I wrote it down and just put it in my phone. And years later, we ended up getting a dog. And I was like, I like the name Soraya. It's pretty. So, so, so Soraya came, and then when we got her, she was so little, and she had little spots on her. And she looked like a little russet potato. Like, she looked exactly like a little russet potato. It was really cute. So his nickname, Spud, was born. So now we're going to get into the fun part. So before you start, oh my gosh, they are going bonkers. You want to make sure that your lights actually work. So we'll turn off the lights. I can't quite turn off all of them, but you can you can see the glow. So take it to a dark place. <laughs> so we have our three settings, and then off. So for this, we're going to un unplug it, and you want to have this area well lit when you're doing this part. So, and then Soraya's middle name is Colette, and, Col and the old guy's name is Rudy, apparently. And so that's where Rudy came in, and his middle name is Chin Po, and Chin Po is from Mulan. It's like, he like, when he's like... Mixing for one is like, like, like beef, pork, chicken. Mm. <laughs> so, and then plus my husband's a big, lovable guy, kind of like Chinpo. And then funny enough, when he was in the military, he got the nickname Chinpo because he loved to eat and he, he ate a lot and he was a big dude and he he did 
have a buzzed or shaved head at some point. So, so quite funny. So actually, yeah, that was before we had our, our Rudy. He had the nick military nickname Chimpo. So that kind of played into that one. Then his, after that, we jump over to Rivers Kids. So we have Dozer. And his name kind of came about when he, when the, his siblings decide to get to the milk. So he was kind of dorky like that. So, so Dozer became his name. And then it's kind of like a play on words from like the movie Cars because you have like bulldozers in there. And as long or as short of a piece of clear thread, you want to use invisible thread. I used colored thread the first time I did this and you can see you'll end up seeing the striations on your lights if you happen to see more of your lights on your design you'll see the striations or if you use invisible I got this thread from Joanne fabrics and so it says and it's a sulky invisible thread they carry it at Walmart they'll probably carry invisible or clear thread if you, I, I would think fishing line if you would be the same, but I think fishing line is thicker than this, so that might be too thick. But anyway, so yeah, clear thread, and your needle kind of doesn't really matter as long as it's a decent eye that you can thread, which is the most important part. If you can't thread it, then kind of a little bit harder to work with. And then we're going to unattach and this is the part where it gets long. two meters 90% of the time I can get away with two meters I did do a Harley Davidson design which I actually have right behind me and it, so it's clipped together to finish so this is all of it and I ended up needing two because I didn't. I only had two meters, and it wasn't quite big enough or long enough. So this is that. This was a pain in the butt, a royal pain in the butt. So I don't recommend doing letters. <laughs> let me let me segue real quick. If you do a design with letters, you're not going to get the little fine detail around the letters. You're going to get generic up. And down and around that's that's it unless your letters are ginormous and huge or just done like the crest and then have a big HD in it like there's so many other things I could have done and I could have gotten away with just using one light wire but because I was dumb and wanted to go all out this took two so depending on what you're doing you they do come I think the longest I've seen is like six meters it's like it's like I don't know I know maybe not that maybe it's six feet. I don't know I've seen some that are ridiculously long because they also put them into cars and then the inside and all that stuff so they make them really long so it just it just depends on where you get them from but two meters is usually good enough for the bulk of designs which is pretty cool okay so back to this one and so this will be your end point and this little cap will come off and so whatever extra you have you'll cut and then you want to save this cap and then put it on afterwards but this is your starting point so this is the part that needs to get fished into your bag to be able to connect to the battery to be able to make it light up and because you're working on clear vinyl it doesn't matter if you put this on the front, if you put it on the back, because it doesn't really matter. You're going to, once it's all done, there, it, it would match up that way. So if I want to put the lights on this side to go directly against the jelly, I can do that, or they can go on the back side. It's clear fun. It really, it doesn't, so it's all good. It just lays, so I will do it with the lights going up against the jelly. I'm just going to do it this time, see what happens. But So you want to make sure you figure out, okay, where, where do I want this to come into my bag? Do I want this to come in at the bottom 
of my bag? Do I want to come in at the top of my bag? Do I want to kind of come in the middle? That's where you need to figure out the bag. I'm going to try to, when I sew up the pocket, pocket, and then then fish this in, and then I can always like hand stitch the rest of that pocket closed around it and do it that way. So I'm so that's what I'm gonna try on this one. So I kind of want it to be in the middle-ish. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. So and then depending on how you're gonna have it come in, you want to kind of gauge yourself and give yourself like a tail. So that's a decent. And then you don't want to necessarily give yourself so much tail because you do have tail on the battery. Like so, there, there's my tail here. Here's my tail here. So add those together. That's a pretty decently long. You have a decent amount of workspace, working space, to get, to get them to connect. So I'm gonna have it come in about the midpoint. And that's the bad part about working with the invisible thread. You kind of lose where stuff is. Okay, so there's my end point. Willow and me. That's them. If you hear the growling and the whining, that's the sisters. I'm going to start from the back. Eek. There we go. And I'm going to come up. And then my fingers back here. Let me see if I can zoom. Can I zoom on these? Oh, snap! I can zoom! Okay, let me see if I can turn this down so you guys can get a better view. Alrighty, now I can zoom. This is awesome. So cool! Sorry for the movement. Okay, yay! Okay, so now I have to remember to keep you guys in this area. Cool, now you guys can see what I'm doing better. Yay! All right, okay, what am I doing? End of the clear thread, because I don't want to pull all the way through just yet, because when you make your hole through your clear vinyl, it's gonna stay there, which is, which is nice. But like when you sew through like cotton and stuff like that, usually your you can your holes can kind of disappear. Nope, these guys stay. So I want to pull my needle through. So I know it's impossible for you guys to see it, but my fingers are holding apart the thread, the clear thread. So I want my needle to come up in between the two of them because no matter like you would have to knot the end of your clear thread like four or five times, if not more, to be able to get it to not pull through the hole that your needle made, which can be incredibly frustrating, but I found that doing this it this way, where if I pull it up through the middle of the thread on the back side, okay, come on, why aren't you wanting to come through? Really? then it tends, it, it locks itself off. Okay, careful. Being difficult. Okay, cool. So then I don't have to worry about having multiple, trying to tighten multiple knots and trying to get everything to not get pulled through. Okay, so then you do, you end up doing like a few a few times to go through this one spot to help hold the start point. And you don't want to go back through the exact same holes. You want to make new ones. So I usually go through a couple times, two or three times. I'm going to do a third time. And yes, you will end up catching your thread on your wire line. So I signed up to teach in Orlando and I was excited about it and it's like okay this is gonna be really cool where am I at and then I had family be like hey we want to do a surprise trip to D 
Disneyland, and this is when we're planning to do it. It's like, and it's the exact same weekend. So I was like, are you kidding me? And it's like, I haven't seen them in a few years, and yeah, and I, my schedule is a lot easier to work around. My husband's schedule is fairly easy to work around where they have like school and other stuff, so it's a lot harder for them to get stuff figured out. So I had to withdraw my application for Orlando. So long story short, no, I won't be teaching at Orlando this year. No. Hopefully in the future. Sorry, I'm trying to keep myself centered for you guys. So my so now you're just your goal is to you don't have to do stitching like right on top of each other you can have a half inch gap court three eighths quarter inch gap and then my stitches like so my needle came up this way and i'm going in over here you can stagger your stitches especially because this is just nice long easy straightaways not the end of the world or it's not as difficult as like the Harley Davidson one where I had to be a lot more careful. This one's got nice, are going to be a royal pain in the butt. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, how am I going to, to do this? Like, so then, yeah, that's the other thing. You want to try to map out, okay, where do I start? If I go up this way and then I come down here and I go around, you want to try to figure out your direction of travel and how you can like minimize overlaps and stuff like that usually I just kind of go and then I just figure it out as I go but there are times especially the more challenging ones where I do take the time to pre-map myself and be like okay can I do this is this gonna work all right I'm caught on something oh the tape over there and I'm caught on something over here there we go. okay so as we're cruising and I have my first curve. It's a nice, easy, relaxed curve, so it's not anything horrible. But if you were going to have a sharper point, you would create, and then you would just kind of stitch there a few times, and then you can stitch back here to hold that down in place. That gives you a nice, crisper point if you go, as long as you go past your point to really worry about it as much. Another tip to do when you get to your corners, you want to kind of do a kind of a lock off. So I will explain what I mean in a momento. So I go through and like I did with the start, I want to kind of go. Yeah, so having a well lit area is definitely important for this. Okay, what are you guys doing over here? You want to bring your needle up through the middle of the threads and that's going to help just kind of like lock lock the thread in place and then it helps keep it from like wanting to slide around on you and then you just keep keep cruising around Alright, so we'll jump back on the kids' doggy doggy names. So we had Rudy Chimpo, and then we had Dozer. So his is kind of from Cars. Oh, what's Dozer's middle name? Dozer Ray. Ray is also my husband's middle name, so for Raymond. But also Ray is the cool firefly from uh, Princess and the Frog. One for a while. So his was named Bernard, so Bianca and Bernard. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of dorky like that. But, so Joanna's name, and then her middle name is May, M-A-E, and then I guess that's from the movie, well not, I guess, I, I couldn't remember. I had to look it up. But it is from the movie um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the first one, and it's the neighbor's wife's name, I guess. I didn't know that. Like, I remember seeing the movie and I've seen it a few times. I haven't seen it in forever, but. And then her, br and then the last one of that group is Coda. So that one's from Brother Bear. And then his middle name is Shang, also from Mulan. So we got Coda Shang. Yeah, I really like the movie Mulan. 
I still think my husband should cosplay as Shang because he, he could totally pull it off. He could completely pull it off. And what was really funny is we were at Disneyland during, oh, when was it? Chinese New Year? And Mulan was out there and Mushu. And he freaking blew their mind by saying Happy New Year in Mandarin. Or Chinese. I can't remember. I think it was Mandarin. I think it was, he knows some. He knows a little bit about a lot of different languages. But he just freaking rocked their world. And just like they were so shocked. And it was so funny. And when we're all done. I'm like. Doesn't he kind of look like Shang? And they looked at him. Like even like the photographer. And then they there's usually a like. A character. Like handler there or whatever so they all looked at him and they're like oh my gosh he totally could <laughs> so that cracks me up so there's Kota Shang and then we dropped down to our two newest little fur babies we got them a year ago in February Where is my primary? I'm like what am I doing I'm oh, sorry if I keep pulling it out of view so we have Willow and Willow is from Pocahontas, so we have Grandmother Willow. And then her middle name is Evane, or Evie for short. We did have a dog, another corgi, uh, years ago. And she passed away in a tragic accident, like, so not going to go there. But her name was Evane. And so, and that's from the movie Stardust. <laughs> yeah, that movie has a, plays a big role in our in our relationship, like when he blew out his knee, we're sitting in the ER and he, <laughs> what are we doing? We're watching Stardust. <laughs> and then her younger sister is Maple. He, my husband's like, he's just always liked the name Maple. And then I think Maple is a Disney name and it's just, I don't know where it's from but her middle name is joy for one of the emotions from oh my gosh totally blank on that movie now it's one the kid's name is riley there's anger and sadness and disgust oh my gosh what movie ha! i can't remember the name of that movie but so we have maple joy and then somebody pointed out it's like oh are you going for a tree theme because willow and maple it's like no, but now that you pointed out, that's kind of funny. But yeah. So those are our fur babies. Well, we also have a Queensland healer mix. He's 11? No. Yes, he's 11. He's my old grumpy guy. And his name is Jackson. I got him years and years ago with an ex-boyfriend and when we split up he couldn't take him even though I got him for him so, so Jax came to live with me so his name is Jackson Ziggy and then Ziggy is from I guess one of the um oh, what are those things buzzards um no um vultures there we go from Jungle Book I'm like brain farting hardcore here and I guess one of those vultures names is Ziggy. Yay for Google and figuring and finding out all these like random obscure Disney names because like I can't remember everything and I didn't want to go with like the most like blatantly obvious Disney names. So yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of Disney nerds. Okay. Like my first car was a Ford Escape. So I named it Dory. And my sister was kind of like, why do you name your car Dory? Like, whatever. And I never told her. A year later. Sorry if I keep going out of the view. I think my feed froze. Did I freeze? Oh. Sorry, I think my, my phone kind of froze on you guys because it, my phone said low power mode. Let me go find a charger for that one and I can plug it in.
these are super long phone cords so apologies for the bumps real quick i gotta plug my phone in because i did not plan ahead or it had like 60 percent So hopefully it's charging. Okay, so my <laughs> back to my my goofy sister. It took her a year to figure out why I named my car Dory. <laughs> and again, it was a Ford Escape. Escape. So I'm we're cruising down the road, and we're on the freeway, and I can't remember where we were, what we were doing. And all of a sudden, she does the most worst possible thing you could do to somebody while they're driving. <gasps> oh my gosh, I freaking wanted to murder her. And then all of a sudden, she's like, Dory, escape! I get it! <laughs> I'm taping. Down your night. Oh my gosh, it was the funniest thing. I was so mad at her when she did it, it because it took never told her it was just quite comical and yeah clock oh there we go sorry that i froze hopefully my internet is not being ridiculous it's been kind of funky the last few the last week but yeah and for, like my sister like i don't know why i still remember her first car's name it was like Leslie Bertinelli, like which is a combination of two different actresses. Don't ask me why I remember that. Like that was back in oh gosh, when when did she get that car? Like two thousand ten eleven? Eleven? Twelve? Oh gosh, it's only been that twelve? Oh gosh, it's only been that, like, that's it? No, 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 no. Because college was 2000, I ended, we graduated high school and college in 2009. So she got it in like, 2007, 6, 2007, somewhere in there. I'll sneak up on my house because of them. They are my personal <coughs> alarm clocks in the morning. They are my security guards lock off point so I'm going to what the heck hopefully the the audio is not skipping and freezing too and it's just the video I apologize I I guess too many people are watching TV right now at home because our upstairs are the main part of our house doesn't have any like coax cables at all and like we have one that works downstairs like yay for 80s houses or no actually i think this is built late 70s but anyway um yeah so we don't have anything so we have to watch everything through like a ruku stick or like we use a ruku stick but i know there's like other ones you can use but yeah so we have to use everything via wi-fi Hey, Poi? Yeah. Could you, um, the Wi Fi keeps freezing and so my video keeps freezing. I, I don't know how to, how to prevent that. I think we need to upgrade our router. So, yeah, this is the boring, tedious part of doing the light wire. It's the most time-consuming part of this. So, yeah, you just keep going. You just sew it down. And depending on your design, you'll end up doing, like, maybe a couple rows. And I'm getting down to the... Where I'm not having quite as much thread lows. 
So again, I'll do it again real quick. So there's a, and then I'm going to pull up and that's going to lock it off. Would you use a zigzag stitch over? So use a zigzag stitch over the wire. You, I guess that really depends on your design and then plus if your machine likes working with vinyl because sometimes this can stick underneath your machines. Um, like I've accidentally sewn through the wire, I but that was a complete accident. I do not and would not necessarily recommend sewing through your wire because I don't know I don't know what it would really do if you hit the wrong part. Like I know you can cut it and then the, what you cut will still work, but if you put a hole through the middle of your wire, like I don't know if it's going to kill would kill the rest of your wire. Like I don't know. So to, like something like this or has difficulty hand stitching, but it might limit what your like the designs that you can, that you're gonna do, because not everything. What not then? Probably wouldn't recommend doing that. Sorry, trying to find the end of my. This is the the hard part is finding your ends, getting them matched up. This is where I rec definitely recommend. Having a lot. No, I'm just gonna do it again. Oh, find. Ooh, this one's much longer than my first one. Ooh, okay, yeah, much longer. Okay, so I'm going to kind of start. So I left off here. I'm gonna start a little bit back. And I'm going to make sure I don't go through one of the holes I already made. And so like I did before to start, these two fingers have the wire, the thread coming up in between the two of them. So that way I don't accidentally pull it all the way through. I'm going to go back down. And then on the back side, you're going to put your needle through in between the, the two sides of the thread. So that way it locks it off and you can't accidentally pull it through all the way. Perfect. All right, getting it all, all the way through. And then, like before, you just continue on. So as we're cruising, do you guys have any questions? about doing this or what you would need to do. What's everybody working on tonight? I know before I jumped on this, I forgot that the So Magical Expo was doing a live for their wine and chats for their vendors right now. So I was watching that before I did mine. I was like, oh man, I should have should have pushed this back. What did I catch? I kept it and I can always rewatch the other one. And Miss Cheryl is cutting out a cutting out pieces for a Ooh, Star Wars thing. The third I don't even know what that is. I'm gonna have to go look that up. That looks, that sounds like a cool backpack pattern. Yeah, I have Oh my gosh, sitting behind me in baskets, I have, oh my gosh, like, I think three Ethel bags, seven Caitlin bags, three Zeneda backpacks, I think four including this one, and, oh, Country Cow, okay, cool. I'll have to check that out. And, oh my gosh, what else do I have? I have four rice ball backpacks. I have the Esperanza from Aura Rosa cut out. A Ruby from Backstop cut out. 
and then like 17 or 18 Dana packs. Oh my gosh. And then like four more poppy pouches from SoFlo. And then I think I have like 10, nine or 10 Midnight Kiss pouches from Sincerely Jen. Yeah. And I leave on Thursday for my, my next Comic-Con show. So I have till Thursday to try to get as much done as I possibly can. And then I have like 90 or almost 90 five by seven sheets of key fob designs to cut out. Okay, what did I just do? What just happened here? Something crossed. Yeah, so I, yeah, no sleep for me. Yeah, I have a lot left to do. And I can't like cut and do anything in the car because I get like I can't focus while in a car like that at something small. Okay, what just happened here? So like I can't even look at like use my phone during the day if I'm the passenger in a car because like that will just because trying to read that will just make me sick. But yeah, I have like I think four or five quilt tops that are UFOs in my closet. Yeah, I did, and I have the batting and I have the back. I think in some of them I even have the back, like I did back art on it and they're finished. I just need to actually quilt it. I just never have. And I have one I know was from like, um, oh, quilted bags. Oh, <laughs> that, that could be different. It's like, I've seen quilted bags. Those are really cool. I have some from like 2018, 20, yeah, 2019 Ooh, that are still not done. I'll eventually finish it. Eventually. I know this is going to, it's going to be long and tedious and I apologize. And that's the part of doing your design is a labor of love. <laughs> like my, the Harley Davidson one that I did. Oh gosh, I think those lights, it was like two and a half hours or something like that, just for the lights. And I'm probably being modest in that. It probably, it might have been more, I can't remember, because I broke it up and did smaller chunks. But holy cow, that bag was a pain in the butt. Okay, so I want to move this wire to the inside. So I want this to go, just playing a little switcheroo. There we go. There we go. But let's take a moment and we can admire what is what we've done thus far. Oop, and I need to untape this now. So the nice part about doing this to this video at night or later in the day place I can just make it dark in here. So that's the joke running not really joke but just the running thing. I didn't realize how much I set it up this magical class until somebody pointed it out to me. So when you want to test your lights and when you want to do a test fit over your jelly, you want to take it to a dark place because you want to see the lights. Because when I turn, if I were to set this down now and set my jelly over the top of this, I'm not going to see it very well. So you need to go to a dark place to be able to see what you're doing. Um, yes, but they are stand up. Ooh, I don't want to <laughs> Take it to the dark side. <laughs> So I know I have my light on behind me, but it's enough that I can uh, maybe not. Let me go get my clear thread. Let me go turn off the back light. Ooh, there we go. So 
this is why you want to take it to a dark place because then you can see so you so this is what I mean by the dark a dark spot because the gap between the lights is so much in here so even if it's not glow in the dark or whatever if you put a piece of like white or very light color vinyl or even cotton fabric it doesn't really matter as long as it's something light colored behind your lights it can help lighten this up and so it's not quite as dark so if I don't push down on it that's not bad that's not too bad but now I'm going to do a second row around the outside of this so then it plus it'll take up more of my light wire so I'm not wasting it so I'm going to do what I did before and draw a second line and for my outer outside. Let me turn the lights back on. So watch your eyes. Love it. That's going to be awesome. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm super excited about it. Get the bag signed. <laughs> like I'm really excited about getting it signed. But then it's going to sit in my closet for <laughs> airing my collection. So make sure when you're doing this, your battery is disconnected because you don't want to accidentally have this plugged in. And if you accidentally like stab through the light, I honestly, I don't know what it would do, but it doesn't seem like it'd be a good, good. I don't feel like it'd be very good. <laughs> like a so. So if yeah, my points could have been a little better down below, so I'm going to grab my light on my sharpie and I'm going to draw the outside of my design for my outer Now that I got that, it's your battery pack so you can slide the cap off and then they just take two AA batteries and when you're storing them, I do not recommend storing them, the batteries in here because eventually if your batteries corrode and then yeah, get this gets all gunky and stuff like that, that's not going to be very nice. So storing, do not keep your batteries in and then in all honesty, once after I get this signed, and it's going to sit in storage, I'm probably just going to disconnect the battery altogether and then use the battery for another set of lights. Because I'm never, I'm not going to take it out of storage. And then if I do want to show somebody and light it up, then I can always just bar, grab a battery pack and then plug it in. So, no big deal. Okay, let's figure out what my wires, or my so I was done. Oh no, did you get a knot? <sighs> Bad. Part of clear thread. You can get knots. Ish. Okay, I'm not gonna cut it, hopefully. I just can't. Oh my goodness, seriously? This part sucks. And it happens. Oh, well, that seemed to kind of help. Alright, let's figure out what's going on here. Apologies, technical difficulties. Yeah, if you set this down, make sure you the clear vinyl so it's not it's not the end of the world if you get a knot in it okay so now I'm going to I want to make sure to keep this line to stay in line with with my current one so that way it stays over and then I'm going to have it jump over 
So I'm going to do a loop or and then I'm just going to loop my thread underneath a couple of the threads as it kind of doesn't make sense but like just like when I tie it off oh my gosh Oop, wrong way yeah this is the fun of working with <laughs> the clear you catch it on everything really I'm struggling. Send help. <laughs> okay, we are disconnected. Finally. Okay. To the bottom. Because the thread holes will stay and you can see it, just feed your your needle through. So around around we go again. Same thing as before. And then if I were going to do two rows and they were going to be a lot, they were going to be closer together, I could just go over and um, thread both around both rows. Yeah, or yeah, go around them. But because mine are so far apart, I'm just, they're going individual. Not, I know it's hooked up and you can see it light up. Oh. And then you get to do the hat dance. Oh, yes. Best part of doing this. And it's really fun when you like light it up and you show people and then they, they're just like, all right, you're caught. In the future, when I do, if I do the pre recorded ones, I'll probably just fast forward through this part. Or, yeah. Because this is definitely not the most entertaining thing. So what's an idea if once you guys learn how to do this and you get to make one for yourself, what kind of light up designs do you guys want to do or are you guys planning to do for your bags? this one's going a little bit faster which is nice I'm definitely making I'm not putting putting a design for a Star Wars to do a Star Wars light up one I just haven't had time to actually do it I I'm so excited for it so I'm probably gonna do it and have it be done for um, May the 4th and then I also have a Lord of the Rings idea. Did I actually make that design? I think I did. I think I'm going to use my Cricut on that one. So that one's probably going to be another pain in the butt one. But if it turns out, it's going to be so awesome. But And then I'll be doing, for one of my strikes, 
I'm going to be doing a Sailor Moon light up bag. So I'm super excited for to do that one. I'm going to be doing the main character and the moon logo. I haven't I remember watching the show when I was a kid, but I haven't seen it since I was a kid. So I totally need to I'll be channel watching my Sailor Moon while I'm making it. I know I should be watching Star Trek right now, but it's kind of hard to watch more than halfway on this. And then once we get closer to the end, that's when we'll have to go take it to the dark place again and get everything lined up. And then we can clip the clear to the jelly and when everything's lined up and then we at that point then it's just a matter of sewing it down in place so then it doesn't move anymore and then it's secured and then you can continue making on the bag and then it just matters when you actually go to put the lights connect the wires to go from the outside to the inside of the bag or technically it's yeah it's inside but you're not actually on the inside inside part but that's when you can either do you can go through a grommet and if you're doing a grommet or technically it's on the end of the wire you can't get that to fit into a quarter inch it has it only fits through a half inch through it like too many variables on that one but you could probably get away with like an eighth of a tiny one. At any point if it helps you keep the tension because if you notice like back here things were kind of getting loose and moving a little bit more or if I do a locking stitch it'll help down so then it just kind of helps hold it tight and then a little trick when you're going into your curves that's when I tend to do them a lot my when I go in, I tend to do them closer together where the nice long straightaways, you can get away with doing them more spaced out. You want to get them a little bit closer together on your curves so that way it helps hold them in place. I don't know, somebody at so magical but once you because if you once you cut the wire you kind of battery connector and all that stuff oh my lovely children
apologies for my phone continue to freeze. My end of my wire out of the way. And oh my gosh, my video keeps freezing. Okay, maybe it's just that one. All right, so I'm gonna turn off my lights again. Let's plug this in first. Plugged in. Let me get my back lights. Put this down first. And we'll turn that on. So this is just my battery pack, so it's not technically on the wrong side. I think I might do another row, but I'll do that after this is over so you guys don't have to watch the, the torture of like paint drying. But so yeah, this kind of gives you the idea of what, so when I finish getting this, this can hear me long run. So I'm going to just repeat what I said. When you add either, you can add glow in the dark vinyl, you can add a light, a white, or fabric, your choice. You want to make sure that it covers the inside of where the jelly is. And then just sew that down to your clear vinyl, and then you can trim away the excess of this. Okay, we're, it's not frozen. So the very end of this is a little cap, and occasion, and then I will sew through the very end of this where it's clear where the, it's the wire. Okay, so we're unfrozen, so maybe having turned off that one, I can't see any comments now. Okay, so when I refer to the clear vinyl, that means the lights part, so I'm just gonna say clear vinyl. So you move your clear vinyl around to where you get it to line up with your jelly that you like. So this is where you really need to take it to a dark place to make sure it's lined up how you want. Okay, and so you'll clip it all the way around your design and then double check, say, okay, do I like it? Then you disconnect your battery and then you take it over to your sewing machine, pulling your fabric out of the way and you're just gonna sew where you can on your clear vinyl to your jelly. And then whatever is extra outside of that, you can trim that away. So like up here, I'll need to trim the jelly away up there Okay, looks like it unfroze. So that's how you would attach the lights to this part of it. And then from there, this with the lights attached to this, you would treat this as your regular front panel or whatever part of your bag that it's, it's going to be. And then when you get to the part where you add it to the inside of the bag, you can do the grommet, you can add it, making better, getting better Wi-Fi. I'm hoping that the audio comes through so you guys can see so, But that is, that's literally so. But that is... That's literally how you put the lights on and something. Give, if you can give it a thumbs up, look out for more tutorials to come. Hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Bye.